sine of 105. Sine of 105, we could do sine of 135 minus 30. There's options. Anyways, you need to spot that you have to use the formula. So it's sine 135 cos 30 um, minus cos 135 sine 30. So then sine of 135 is root 2 over 2. Cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. Minus cos of 135 is negative root 2 over 2. And then sine of 30 is a half. So we're going to get root 2 times root 3 is root 6 over 4. Plus root 2 over 4 which is root 6 plus root 2 over 4. So that would be your exact values. Because root 6 and root 2 are not like radicands. It's like trying to combine an x and a y. It's good to get... And they're the same. So if it was like root 2 plus root 2, that would be 4 root 2. You only combine with like radicands when you're adding... And then you could save the four Which would be wrong. Okay, but... The last one Technically, I'm is... I can give you a coordinate, <laughs> guys. Negative one, one, two, three, four. You always draw towards the x-axis, so this would be oh my lanta. How we draw the sign, the point in the right freaking spot? Okay, so we're at four and negative one, so we're about near. Okay, so this is x equals four, y equals negative one. R is always positive, so this is the only way if I give you just a coordinate that you can get away with not drawing it because R is always positive. So, we're going to do R squared equals 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. R squared equals 17. R equals plus or minus root 17. And in this case, it's root 17. Okay, cosecant x. Is sine flip. Sine is sine. Oh, you guys can do Sine is y over r. So cos secant is r over y. So it's root 17 over negative 1 or negative root 17. And then I gave you sine, which is just negative 1 over root 17, which you have to rationalize. So it's going to be negative root 17 over 17. All right, three. <laughs> I went, I just looked that up. Um, all right, so cosecant is sine flip. So instead of y over r, this is r over y. I specifically made the r negative so that you could be like, that's not possible. So the negative would have to go with the y. And the positive would have to go with the r, because the negative sign can move. We agree? Now, I'm looking for where sine is negative and tan is positive, and the only place where that happens is in quadrant 3. Now, I know r has to equal 5. I know y has to equal negative 3. And when I use Pythagorean theorem, x equals negative 4. This is a nice one, that 3, 4, 5 triangle. It happens a lot. Now, when I see this, I immediately think, go to my formula sheet. So this is what's going to go in for A. This is going to go in for B. The minus sign tells me to use the minus one. So I'm going to go cos pi over 6 minus theta equals cos pi over 6 cos theta plus sine pi over 6 sine theta. Now what I could do is I could give you two triangles, like a theta and like an alpha if I wanted to, but in this case I give you one triangle and the other part comes from your unit circle, correct? So cos pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Cos of theta is negative 4 over 5 because it's x over r. Plus sine of pi over 6 is a half. And then sine of theta is going to be negative 3 over 5. And then we get negative 4 root 3 over 10 minus 3 over 10. And I told you that you should get a common denominator when using these. That's the great thing about them. They'll always give you a common denominator. So I'm going to get negative 4 root 3 minus 3 over 10. 
When using this formula, the only way you can reduce it is if a number can come out of the coefficient of all three. There isn't one. You can't put these together because this is a root three and you can only put root three together with another root three, right? So your problem is to stop. That's your problem. Quit going. Quit moving. Quit trying to make it simpler. You can't. Okay? This one is actually a really easy version of that one. It's done terribly. It's a really easy version of that one. This one is just one triangle. I want sine off of it. This one I wanted sine off of it and cos off of it, right? Secant is friends with what? Cos. Cos is x over r, so this is r over x. It's actually off the unit circle. I need cos positive and tan negative. Where does that happen? In quadrant three, four. In quadrant four. Because I need C to be positive and T not to be. So I know X equals root 3. I know R equals 2. I need to find Y and it's negative something. So I do Y squared equals 2 squared minus root 3 squared. Y squared equals 4 minus 3. Because square root of 3 and the squared, they just cancel each other. So Y squared equals 1. So y equals plus or minus root 1. Because I drew it, I know it's minus 1. Because square root of 1 is 1. And I just want oh, no. sine. Sine x is y over r. So it's going to be negative 1 over 2. <laughs> Do you think you got negative 1 over 2? Okay. I'm going to get you guys to give me these two things. So I want something equivalent to this. Oh, we're Equivalent to 1 plus cos 2x. Should take you seconds to figure that one out. Something equivalent to it. And I want something equivalent to it with one term. So I want it to end up with one term somehow. And then 2, I want you to solve. We did this for yesterday. We're doing it again. Solve. 2 cos squared theta equals 1 plus sine theta from negative pi to 2 pi. Oh. Equivalent. You have options. The thing was when you see sine 2x, you should immediately replace it with 2 sine x cos x. Done. Right? Sine 2x is easy. There's only one option. If you see sine 2x, you need to replace with sine 2x or 2 sine x cos x. But when you see cos 2x, you have three options. And remember, I told you sometimes it's better if there is a 1 with it to figure out if it's a plus 1 or a minus 1 because often you want it to go away. Correct? This one is a plus 1. So if I look over here, if I pick 1 minus 2 sine x, I'm going to now have 2 minus 2 sine x, because it's going to be 1 plus 1. We agree? But if I pick the 2 cos squared x minus 1 version, I would replace this with 2 cos squared x minus 1, and then I have 1 plus here. What happens? Boom, boom. I'm left with a single trig ratio. Okay? Now, is that the only way? No. If I ask for a single trig ratio, that is the only way. Right? Okay. Six. You have to be able to do these. If you need to visualize, you can go 180 to 360 to help you out. Now, paying close attention, we will always find the answers from 0 to 360 no matter what. That's what we're going to do. Some of them might be too big. Like if it goes from negative 180 to 180, some of them might be too big and you kick them out, that's fine, but you need to find them first. So, if I have a squared and a single trig, I move everything to one side. If I just have a squared, I can put the squared as an M, I can move the number over, I can take the square root of both and get four solutions, right? We did that with 4 cos squared x minus 1 yesterday. We moved the 1 over, we moved, or it was 3. Move the 3 over, moved the 4 over, took the square root, got four solutions, moved on, okay? But when I have a squared and a single, I have to move it to one side. So I get 2 cos squared theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And I must replace the squared. It's my only option. 
So I get 2 bracket 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Distribute, I get 2 minus 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And then I have to collect like terms every single time I do this because there's always going to be this like two terms coming out of one term, correct? Two terms out of one, so we have to collect like terms. So we're going to get negative 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta plus 1 equals 0, and then we can go let m equal sine x, or sine theta, there's no x. So I get negative 2m squared minus m plus 1 equals 0. Multiply to be negative 2 and now it's going to be negative 1. It's going to be negative 2m plus 1m. Group. I take a negative 2 out and an m and I'm left with m plus 1. Take out a plus 1, I'm left with m plus 1. So I have negative 2m plus 1 and m plus 1 equals 0. And I get negative 2m plus 1 equals 0. Negative 2m equals negative 1. m equals a half. And then m plus 1 equals 0. m equals negative 1. Except m is sine theta. Sine theta equals a half. Off your unit circle here and here, which is 30 and 150 which is great and lovely. Now, I will see here, come on, join me. Okay, it's from negative, it's actually from negative pi to two pi, so I need to have radiant answers, but I'm just gonna show it to you in degrees to see if it makes a little more sense for the coterminal part of it. So we need to go from negative 180 to 360. Now, what I always do is I now, if I need negative angles, I'll subtract 360 from both of these because that gives me a coterminal with it gets me another negative that's going to land on it, correct? So, I'm going to subtract 360 from this, and it's going to get me negative 330, which makes absolute sense because I start here, and it would take me to 330 to get me there, right? It's clockwise. If I go negative one, I go 150, I'm minus 360, oops, I get negative 210, which makes absolute sense because I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to stop at 30 past 180, negative 210. Correct? Yeah. My restricted domain was from negative 180 to 360, which is technically on a number line. Negative 180 to 0, so everything from 0 to negative 180, and then 0 degrees to 360. We agree? Which of these fit in that? Well, 30 fits, and it would be in this portion of the number line. 150 fits in that portion. Negative 330 is somewhere over here. Negative one, uh, 210 is about here. Are they in my space? No. No. So I don't state these coterminals that I found. You can just subtract 360 from them, though, and see if they fit. Correct? They don't fit. Because negative 180 is from here to here. They're past that. They're outside the domain. Now, that means that they're going to be at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Theta. Now, sine at negative 1. Negative 1 is here. Okay? That is at 270. Does 270 fit? Yes. Okay, then I check its coterminal. I can just subtract 360 from it. And I get negative 90. So negative 270 is somewhere here. Negative 90. Ah! Oh, it fits in there too, doesn't it? So both of these are solutions. And negative 90 fits as well, just if you could visualize it, because... Negative angles start here, and it goes to here, which takes me negative 90 to get me there, right? So both of them fit. So for this one, my solution would be negative 90 and 270. So I can either box these separately, or I could say theta equals negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes? All right. What I wanted to go over with, um, you guys still have to check Ferris wheels yourself, but I want to go over some big items of Ferris wheels. So in a Ferris wheel, 
It's usually drawn like this. Correct? It's usually drawn like this. What is the radius the same as? The, uh, amplitude. The amplitude. And the reason why is this is your radius. This is your radius from minimum to midline, midline to maximum. That is your amplitude, correct? What about one revolution? What does that cover? Period. <laughs> the period. So if I gave you an equation of a Ferris wheel, let's say, and I wanted to know how long it took to do one revolution, you would just find the period from the equation. How do you find a period from an equation? 2 pi by b. Why is it 2 pi? Because it's a word problem, and word problems have to be in radians. They make no sense in degrees. You could not use 360. That would be bad. Okay? Another thing, the center of the circle, what is that? Oh. It's the midline. It's this. It's the line that cuts the craft in half. The craft. Yep, that craft. So the center of the circle is your mid is your midline. Right? So you have to be able to go through and do that. Your midline is what value off of an equation? Your D value. Remembering yesterday, I'm just bringing this back again because people's brains forget. How do you find the maximum off of an equation? D your D plus, plus your, your absolute value of amplitude. absolute value of your A, which is your amplitude, or your D plus your amplitude, right? And your minimum? D minus your absolute value of A, or your amplitude. Your range will be Y such that min is less than or equal to y, is less than or equal to max. Do you see how these are slanted L's? You just go min to max slanted L's because you read from the y. y is greater than or equal to min. y is less than or equal to max. That's why they're in the same um, shape, because you read from the y, y, e, r. What else was I going to go over? I had a little sheet. I'll take a picture of this. Um... So the base, if they give you the base, let's say, the base will help you get the midline or the maximum or the minimum. It's just to help you dis decipher what this would look like. So if they gave you a base of 1 and they gave you a radius of 8, we then know that the midline's at 9, the maximum's at 17, the minimum's at 1. So the base just gets you to rise that up. Yeah. Um, little notes. Wait, so do you count the base when you're doing your midline? I think you add it to your radius. You add it to your radius to get your midline. Yeah. So you have to get to the middle, to the center. So you're going to go up 1 plus 8 radius would get you a midline of 9. Oh, okay. Because you have to get to the center of the circle, right? Right. And it doesn't just start on the ground. No. Okay. Okay. Um, if I gave you like h of t equals 3 sine 2t plus pi over 3 minus 6 is a ferris wheel that's not a ferris wheel plus six is a ferris wheel <laughs> it was in the it was in the ground it's fine it can be a creepy ferris wheel so what would the center of this ferris wheel be at it would be at six the midline what would the radius of this ferris wheel be at radius your radius is your amplitude it's your amplitude so it'd be at three so this baby's at six Right, it's at 6. It has an amplitude of 3 or a radius of 3. So what would the base be then? This base would be 3. It's really high off. It's really short. <laughs> and then the height of this one would be at 9. We agree this crazy Ferris wheel that we have happening here. Okay. Yeah. It would rotate really creepishly because I just gave you a really weird number to do. Yep. How do you know the base is 3? You know the base is 3 because I know my amplitude is 3, which means my radius is 3. And I knew my center was at 6. So if my center is at 6, and I go down 3 as a radius, I still have 3 more meters to hit the ground. So my midline is at 3, or is it 6? 
the center of the circle is at six meters. And then I have to go three radius. Six minus three gets me to three, right? And then I still have to get to the ground, which is zero. The center of your circle is at six. She's going to shut my head. Now, we could also figure out the max and the min by just using our rules we know. What's the maximum? Our maximum is D, which is 6 plus my amplitude, which is? And it's 9. I can just use my rules, right? My minimum would be 6 minus my amplitude, which is 3. That would also help me get my mins and maxes by literally just doing that. Does that make sense? If I wanted one full rotation, I would have to go the period equals 2 pi divided by 2. So this bad boy is, is, is rotating every 3.14 seconds. It's really fast. Or 3.14 hours. So it's really slow. Those are the options. So if I ask you anything about, like, um, the translations, yes, you'd have to take a two out. But for what I'm asking now, when you divide by two, it's, it's pi over three. Divided by two is like pi over three times a half. So you get pi over six. For what I've been asking, that C doesn't matter. Right. And so when yeah. the C value matter, like what type? What, the C what value matters, matters if I make you come up with the equation. Right. That's it. Okay. That's it. And if we're coming up with the equation and so, on so our when, own, it probably what will you give us for us to come up with that C value? Just I'd give you information about the Ferris wheel, and we'd have to come up with the equation. Okay. What happens if I give you this equation and I ask for the height at two seconds? Yeah, you just this is an ex, this is an extremely easy question, extremely easy. If I want the height when time equals two seconds, and I gave you the equation, what do you just do? Put two in for t. What's the hardest part of doing this? Make sure you're in freaking radian mode, because if you're in degree, it ain't happening. It's a word problem. This is also radian. And use brackets properly, correct? Correct. So you would just put 2 in for t. You go 3, sign, bracket, 2. Actually, we press sign, the bracket opens. 2, bracket 2, plus, put this in pi over 3 in brackets, because it's the only way to know it's a fraction. Close bracket plus 6, enter. Circle multiple choice, do move you on. To, so if it's like 3, sign, bracket 2, would you do bracket 2, close the bracket? Well, it's going it, to, I wouldn't use this version. I'd use the easier one. Right? Right. So I'd go 2, and then I'd put a 2 in here. Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. And then this, and then the pi over 3. This has to go in brackets to calculate the subtraction. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So the C value doesn't apply to the Ferris wheel itself in changing it. The C value helps get the equation. And remember the C values on a Ferris wheel, if you find the time and split it between four. So say this one, it's not this example, it's a new one. Say this one happens every, so this would be zero, and say this would be 10 seconds, and then this would happen at 20 seconds, this would happen at 30 seconds, this would happen at 40 seconds, let's say, right? Remember that when you go to do the C, remember when you go to do the C value, get to the bathroom or something? Yeah. Yes. Remember when you have to do the C value of a positive coast, you look for the closest Max. maximum. So this would be T minus 20 would be the C value of the positive coast. The C value of negative coast would be zero. If I had a choice of a Ferris wheel and we were starting on the bottom, unless they were parachuting you in from somewhere, I would be picking negative coast if I had a choice. Because my C every single time will be zero. Mm -hmm. And this is on your way up meeting the midline. So this would be your C value of your positive sign, and this would be your C value of your negative sign. That's where the C's come in, is when you're deciphering the equation that they ask you for. Um, oh, these are from chapter four. What if I just, these are the easiest questions, and everyone will get them wrong because I don't know where your heads are at. Like, you're like, they must be hot up. It's not. Okay. So say I give you, like, secant of 
negative pi over 4. Secant of negative pi over 4. We need to find its coterminal that just sits on the unit circle. We agree? Yes. So your first step for these should be to add 2 pi. Mm -hmm. So we go pi over 4 plus 2 pi. You could even just negative, type it into your negative, calculator. Negative pi over four. That is. And then we <laughs> have this over once. We can multiply by 4. Or we could just type it in without pi into our calculator. It's going to get you negative pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, which is actually 7 pi over 4. This is coterminal with negative pi over 4. They land on the exact same arm, right? We just need to find the arm that lands on the unit circle. 7 pi over 4 is the exact same arm. If you don't believe me, negative pi over 4 is here. Boom. That's negative pi over 4, correct? Yes. 7 pi over 4 is here. Same arm. Same thing. Do you see that? Negative pi over 4 is just this way. 7 pi over 4 is this way. Same answer. So I could actually find secant of 7 pi over 4, and I'm going to get the same answer. What is secant with? Cos. Co. Secant is just cos flipped, is it not? Yes. So what the heck is cos at 7 pi over 4? 4 over 7 pi. No. Uh, root, two over two. root 2 over 2 is cos of 7 pi over 4. Oh. You can't flip <laughs> angles. Right. You have to flip answers. So the cos of 7 pi over 4, we've got to get the answer to it first. It's root 2 over 2. So secant of 7 pi over 4 is 2 over root 2. Rationalize. Rationalize. You guys are ruining my fun. 2 root 2 over 2, which is just root 2. It's as if you said that already. It's just root 2. Okay, so knowing that, try these. Cosecant of negative 7 pi over 6. Cotan kind of scared for of negative. I'm scared, but like I also kind of feel okay. Right? Like Definitely. Negative 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi will get me at pi over 6. What is sine at pi over 6? Sine at pi over 6 is a half. Thanks for the answer. What is cosecant of pi over 6? 2 over, two over 1 or just 2. So I find the primary trig ratio and then I flip the answer. If I feel the need to flip the angle, I slap myself and say never. If you're like, when? Never. If you're like, but maybe, no. So if you ever see pi over 6 and you're like, I should do 6 over pi. You should not, yeah. ever. Okay, it will end badly. Okay, then negative 135, I do negative 135, plus 360, and I get neg or positive 225. So I could look for cotan of 225. Cotan of 225 is 1. Because tan there is 1, and 1 over 1 flipped is 1. The greatest place ever seen. Okay? Only other thing I didn't go over was theta equals A over R formula. The biggest thing that people stink at in this one is not in radians. So your theta has to be in radians. And if you're like, why? Well, because these have to be the same unit. So let's pretend. Let's pretend the arc length was 15 centimeters. And let's pretend the radius was 2 centimeters. When centimeters cancel off, what units am I left with? Nothing. Nothing. And what in degrees or radians does not need units? Radians. So when these cancel off, you're actually left with a radian measure. Therefore, this needs to be a radian, radian measure. So on the test, you will either always be asked for theta in degrees. Why would you be asked for theta in degrees? Because the formula gives it to you in radians, and then I would make you convert. Or I'll ask for A or R, and I'll give you theta in degrees, degrees and you'll have to convert it to radians to solve. So you multiply by pi and divide by 1 degree first? Yes. Yeah. From degrees to radians? Oh, and multiply by pi. Dr. Pot, degrees to radians, pi on top. Degrees to radians, 
high on top. If it's, if it's in degrees, I just, you just... I just think of the chemistry, like, um... Yeah, like well, chemistry. And your pie <laughs> Sorry, I'm so confused right now. When you verify, let's go over this. So if you verify, say I have, I'm giving something really stupid easy because I can't come up with anything really hard. With. Let's say cotan x, this would be the best day ever if I give you this, equals cos x over sin x. Let's pretend that is what I'm making you verify. It's real. But mad easy. Mad easy. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mad easy. Easy better. Yeah, okay. But let's pretend it's this. Now, what could I actually do? I could add a cosecant over here as well. I could go cos squared x, and then over here I could add a 1 minus sine squared x, couldn't I? Because they're the same thing, aren't they? Yes. Did I add a cos squared x to this side and a, one, and a cos squared x technically to that side? Yeah, I just advanced it. I'm out of control. This is craziness. So, if I ask you to verify though, say I, I tell you x is pi over 6, and I want you to verify it, your first step is to... Boom, boom, don't do this out of the question. I'm doing this because it's my own question. You can't do this. You rewrite it. Don't be lazy like me right now. Left side, I'm running out of time. Left side, right side. We agree? That's the first step. What is the next step that you must do? Pi over six Plug in pi over 6 for every x. Can I manufacture or move any of this or start proving some stuff or do no. anything else? No. Can you? Yes. Will it result in bad things? Uh-huh. Yes. It's not verifying. So, we're going to go cos squared of pi over 6. This is going to get you one mark, literally. One mark. Well, one mark is out of 3.5. You know what I mean? So, verifying as you plug it. Yes, okay. you're verifying that pi over 6 works. Now, boom, boom, boom. This is so great. So much fun. I don't know what I'm doing. Look it. Okay. Okay, then I have, oh, so many brackets for no reason. Um, sine squared pi over 6. Boom, boom. Where do I go next? Can you change Rhymes with Funit circle. Unit. Yes, we go to the unit circle. You know the Funit. So, we do cos pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2, and then we square it. And then I go cotan of pi over 6, which I know is root 3. If you don't, you can figure it out by doing root 3 over 2 divided by a half, right? Root 3. Boom. Then here I go... This squared is 3 over 4 times root 3 over 1. So I get root 3 over 4. Root 3, 3, root 3, whoops, over 4. Boom. This side, not so nice. Cotan of pi over 6, root 3 over 2. Isn't that just cos? That's cos. I just did what I, yeah, it's right though. My mouth didn't say right. Okay, good. 1 minus uh, a half squared. And then divided by one half. Then I get root three over two. And then this would be one minus a quarter, which is three quarters. Divided by multiplied by. See, that's a really big multiplication. And then I would get three root three over eight times two over one. Jum, 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 jum. They match. Three root three over four. Well, Crazy Jesus. Jesus. Yo, yo, yo. Hold us. Just wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. Uh, 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 yeah. Just find the huh? multiple different uh, spots. What were those spots? The four. Four. So, <laughs> and PDs. No, wait, two cancel out when two cancel out, you're left with four from the eight. You Are you talking up here? No, no, I'm asking you where the hell You don't know where that comes from. You get six root three over eight, which is three over four. Okay, non-permissible values are also a thing. That's where Non-permissible values, you say non-permissible values for every denominator or any that will be a denominator. So anytime you have like an A over a B, you would just state B, correct? But if you had like an A over a B divided by a C over a D, you do B and D because they're denominators plus C because it would be. What? So you just take each of those Oh, pieces. right, because you would flip it to multiple. So if you have something like 
cos x over 1 minus sine squared x divided by blah, sine x over cos tan x. Sure. You would have to take this one, set it equal to 0, find all its spots. This one, set it equal to 0, find all its spots. This one, set it equal to 0, find all its spots. General term. I'll take the Wait. I don't got time for that. What is this for? <laughs> NPDs. So. It's not from the school of that. Oh. Oh, so we hit you. Sin, Light bulbs. Sine squared x cannot equal 1. No, I just, I didn't hear. So sine x can't equal plus or minus 1. Okay. <laughs> because so you have minus 1. She was like B, B, C, and D. And I was like, for what? For what? Right. I like how you're forcing me into doing this right now. <laughs> I see you. And then uh, sine x cannot equal 0. <laughs> Wait, it's actually this one would end up being every arm. I could slide them together. Because cotan is that every single one of these is a problem. And then sine is here. 90 degrees and any I. Bro. Yo, bro. Mm hmm. Fo show. Yo. Good boy.